Welcome to another video by Royal Christ College and today we're going to be talking about multiple sclerosis. You can follow us on our Instagram at Royal Christ College or you can likewise follow on our website at www.royalchristcollege.co.uk and follow into our YouTube forward slash neurology section to learn more about multiple sclerosis. Now what is multiple sclerosis? So we know that it is a demyelinating autoimmune condition which usually affects the central nervous system and you know the central nervous system consists of mainly the spinal cord as well as the brain. Now in terms of these, the main fundamental thing that's affected is the neurons and you know neurons are connected by a myelin protective sheath which increase the conduction speeds. Now what happens is the oligodendrocytes are the cells within the CNS which cause for production of myelin sheath and when they break down they cause also rapid destruction of myelin. So you know this is an autoimmune condition where the body's immune system attacks these myelin which then obviously leads to the image shown on the screen and overall leads to a decrease in conduction speed and a decrease in conduction speed means that if overall you have a you know sensory defects and these sensory defects can include a various range of stuff such as sensory motor as well as cognitive problems now let's look at the mechanism of how does the demyelination occur so you know in the brain there is a specific area known as a blood brain barrier which stops and is very specific to only certain molecules to enter such as T cells and B cells. When these, because of an autoimmune condition like multiple sclerosis, these become activated on the myelin. Once these T cells become activated, they cause further B cells to activate it and they cause increased receptors to be found on the barrier cells, which lead to extravasation as well as increased permeability of molecules such as macrophages. And then what does this happen? These then go on and activate and are targeted against the myelin, which leads to breakdown of the myelin. So overall, there's increased permeability of immune cells and by autoimmune mechanisms, they attack the oral myelin. Let's talk about the causes. Unfortunately, they're idiopathic and unknown, but there are mainly genetic factors. Females are more affected and the main people with these effects, uh, multiple sclerosis present with the gene of HLA-DR. Environmental factors include infections and vitamin D deficiency, especially in more common in Euro northern parts of Europe or away from the equator. Now, the genetic screening can be used to check for people with this gene. Now, the main thing I want you to take away from is the infections is always the initiating factor which causes multiple sclerosis. And in genetic factors, there's a 15% chance or a higher per, uh, chance that you would have multiple sclerosis if someone in your family, especially a first degree relative, has it. Now, let's look at multiple sclerosis histological findings. What do you find in, especially when you take a histological slide of the brain of someone with multiple sclerosis? So you know it's a white matter disease and the affected areas are usually well subscribed as well as they have a slightly depressed glassy appearance. This collectively is known as plaques and you would hear about plaques whenever you read about multiple sclerosis in any textbook. These are most frequently affects the third and fourth ventricles near the optic chiasm as well as the brain stem and in the spinal cord as well as the descending tract. So remember all of this later on because when you learn about the symptoms you would know why these areas are affected. These plaques can be is classified into two different categories, active as well as non-active. The active phase consists of four different types. Basically on a histological slide there is an ongoing demyelination within the active plaque and they can be split into type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. In non or inactive plaques, there's only information and there's no ongoing demyelination. So if anyone does ask, the plaques have two different histological variants. But, you know, this is just extra information for you to take home. Now, it is multiple sclerosis a type 4 hypersensitivity. So if anyone does ask you, this is a type 4 hypersensitivity autoimmune condition, which affects and it usually leads to an irreversible condition, so over time, progressively, it gets worse. Now let's look at the types of multiple sclerosis, and the main ones I want you to take away is there's four different ones, and the first one is the relapsing and re-emitting one, which is the most common seen across the world. The second one includes secondary progressive, and the third one includes primary progressive, and there's a fourth one. So we can start off by drawing the x-axis where the time is lifespan, and the y-axis consists of the severity of the disability. Now in relapse and remitting zone, there is an overall gradual increase in the severity, but there is an area known as a remission as well as relapsing. relapsing. So you can see remissions and relapsing zone. So sometimes there are areas or times where the symptoms completely worsen, but then they get better, but then they reattack. 
So there's an overall gradual worsening over time, but it's much more slower and it takes much more longer. This is the most common condition usually affecting patients. Whereas on the secondary progressive types of multiple sclerosis, the severity is higher. The first part is usually just like the relapse and remitting, but then there's a constant immune attack, which becomes constant for a very long time and leads to a progressive disorder. So there is an initial relapse and remitting where there's worsening and then eventually it becomes a constant progressive. So then now you can imagine what primary progressive would be. It would simply be a straight line which just goes up because there is a constant immune attack. So the person suffers from constant worsening of symptoms as well as cognitive behavior and dysarthry as well as various other conditions. So overall, they are completely getting worse over time. The final one is progressive relapsing where the severity of disability is way higher and much more greater compared to the other three. And again, there is signs of re-emitting and relapsing uh, symptoms that you can see on the graph. But the main one I want you to know is relapsing and remitting, which is the most common and found globally amongst 80% of people. Now the symptoms vary from person to person and it depends on the age of onset. Mainly it starts at around the age of 20 to 40 years old, especially in females, and worsens as over weeks and progressively worsens over months to years. There is basically known as something known as a charcoal neurological triad and this consists of three different things which it can be classified into the symptoms, so intentional tremor, dysarthria, and finally, nystagmus. So you would know that dysarthria is basically difficulty in speech because the Broca's area is usually affected by these plaques, and this leads to slurred speech, and this interferes with daily tasks and cognitive behavior because they can't, some people usually can't stutter, They when they talk, they end up stuttering. Now, in terms of nystagmus, I've written it underneath the intentional trauma, but I would move it down back to the nystagmus. There is an involuntary eye movement because of damage to the optic nerve leading to blurred vision and dark point of vision. This leads to painful eye movements as well as double vision in some people. So mainly, if you watch other YouTube videos, these people complain of eye problems first. Now you can see these plaques occur in different areas. So if someone is affected by nystagmus, the plaques are in optic nerve, in intentional tremor in the motor pathways, and dysarthry in the in brainstem. The intentional tremor leads to muscle weakness, tremors leading to ataxia, as well as vertigo. And they may also suffer from muscle paralysis, as well as, especially of the lower extremities, and also hemiparalysis, which means weakness in half lower, half part of the body. Urogenital problems include bowel dysfunction, as well as sexual dysfunction and finally they may have bladder dysfunction so if any of these conditions come up and you have genetically screened them so think multiple sclerosis so the main one i want you to know is dysarthria nystagmus intestinal tremor also collectively known as charcot's neurological triad mainly seen in multiple sclerosis now what is the diagnosis the main and the number one gold standard is mri you would see white matter plaques on your mri scans as you can see on the screen these are mainly the white matter plaques and this leads because of the loss of myelin. You can also take a lumbar puncture or for the cerebrospinal fluid. And from this cerebrospinal fluid, you may find high levels of antibodies. Finally, what you can also do is visual evoke potential, i.e. symptoms of descrip uh, patient's descriptions. But the gold standard is MRI for diagnosing multiple sclerosis as well as symptoms. Now the treatment includes various different ones, especially those suffering from, and it also depends on the type of illness. In the most common condition, especially the relapse and remitting one, it all depends on the medication. Corticosteroids are usually administered in acute attacks, especially so as soon as you find out someone has an attack, you can give corticosteroids as well as interferon beta, which are known as immunosuppressants. Now the key thing is they slow progression of the disease. You can, give, you can do plasmapheresis as well as IV immunoglobulins. Hopefully, horticosteroids and IV immunoglobulins will stick with you and interferon beta a immunosuppressants. They lead to a slowing progressing of the disease. So this is very important. You should also manage the symptoms of depression, bladder dysfunction and cognitive rehabs because these are normal conditions that may occur within the patient. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us to keep us updated.